Stay. I like my new jacket, but it's very slippery. We also see differences in diversity and richness based upon the uh, latitude. Um, there's a greater diversity in the tropics than there are at the poles. I think guesses on why this might be. Why do you get more species living in the tropics than you do at the poles? Climate. What about climate in particular? It's like hotter at the equator. The equator, the tropics. Yeah, the equator. The tropics. It's hotter. What is being hotter do? How would that create more species? Yeah. So you get more species? Like humidity goes up and species goes up? Yeah. What, 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 uh, what creates new species? We've learned about that. Speciation. Good. What does it take to make speciation? Reproduction, right? Reproduction. Okay. There are more niches. What's that? There are more niches. There are more niches. Well, that's, well, that's an interesting one. There are more niches because there are more species. It sort of like builds on itself. Okay. All right. I'll tell you. What do you not have in the tropics? Seasons. Right. When you have seasons, species time their reproduction around the season. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? When there are no seasons, species can just reproduce whenever. And therefore, you have a shorter generation time, and therefore more generations. And that allows for greater um, evolution. Evolution occurs faster. At least that's one hypothesis. There's another hypothesis that just having more heat means metabolism works faster, and then the whole is everything works faster. Yeah, I know. You can imagine, you know, up, you know, like, like way far in the poles, if everything just shuts down in the wintertime, it's going to take, you're just not going to get that many generations in, you know? You also have a lot more selection, you have greater selection for very specific types of lifestyles in the poles versus the tropics. Okay. All right. Um, island bio, so... This is kind of a duh <laughs> explanation. So there's this thing called island biogeography that says um, the bigger the landmass, the more species, and the closer the landmass is to another landmass, another big landmass, the more species there are. This is kind of like no shit, really. I mean, like it's not kind of obvious. So the bigger the area, the more species you'll get, right? You just have a bigger area, and. If you're close, this is distance. These are different islands. This is looking at number of bird species. Distance from Papua New Guinea. The closer you are to Papua New Guinea, the more species you'll have because you've got another large landmass to feed species to it. The farther you get away, the fewer species you have because it's just harder to get there. Right? Does that make sense? This is kind of like why there's more culture in Seattle than in Yakima. Right? It's just a bigger city. There's more going on. And there's more culture of Bellevue than there is in, you know, Tianaway. Because it's close to Seattle. It's closer to a bigger land. It's closer to a bigger area. Does that make sense? Um, this is kind of a, you cannot do this kind of study anymore. This was done back in the 60s. They were, they were these are, this, this is what's called a mangle. It's basically a, a few mangrove trees growing in a very shallow area. This is down in Florida. Um, it's basically a small little island. And what they did is they covered them and then they gassed them and killed every single thing living on it. Yep. And then counted the number of different species living there. And then went back and counted the number of species again over time based upon how close they were to land and how far away they were from land. And what they saw is that the nearest ones got more species than the far, farthest ones did. The farthest ones never actually, in the course of the study, never actually got all the way back. You can't do this kind of study anymore. Like they just, they won't let you do this. Yeah. But it shows that, you know, the closer you are to the large land mass, the more species you'll get. Because it's just, it's easier for individuals to immigrate there. Make sense? 
Questions? Yeah. So they fill it first, and then yeah. it comes, and then opens it up, and, and they kill it again. Well, no, they didn't kill it again. They, they killed it the first time, counted everything that was in there. Because once you kill it, you just catch it all, right? And then um, they would go back from time to time and measure how many had come back. Yeah. Derek? That's a tree in the water growing? Yeah, it's called a mangrove. Who's seen mangroves? I'm sure some of you have seen mangroves. Person? Yeah, person, yeah. They're, they're one of the most common plant types in the tropics. They're super, super. And they're really, really important ecologically, very, very important. If you ever been down to Florida or along the water there, you know, like Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico side. Not so much the, the Atlantic side. All right, Mark, let's take a break. Ten minutes.